Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I am Ruby Roy and welcome back to my perfectly imperfect life. I am here with Luke, my partner, and our newborn, which is what this video is all about. I am filming this much, much later than I should be. It is now nine weeks postpartum, but this is the only chance we've kind of had to sit down together in between work and in between figuring this life out. <laughs> Let's start at the top, shall we? So on the morning of the 28th of July, I went in for a midwife appointment at about like 8, 8.30 in the morning. I was 40 weeks plus three days or something at this point. It was the time when they asked, do you want a stretch and sweep and all that sort of stuff. And I agreed to have a stretch and sweep done because I didn't want to be induced like a week later. So I was like, if I go on a lab with a stretch and sweep, that's better than going into labor induced the following yeah. week but I did book my induction because I didn't want to go over 42 weeks pregnant. That morning I had a stretch and sweep and as you do after getting a stretch and sweep you get contractions so I started getting contractions we quickly went to baby bunting and then went to super chip order and my contractions were getting worse and worse and I was starting to get like uncomfortable and I was like, oh, like, this is just what's meant to happen, but it's getting worse. Can we just go home? So we came home and progressively they started getting worse and worse. It was confusing because like this is what's meant to happen after a stretch and sweep. So we were like, uh, am I in labor? Am I not? So we were like calling the hospital like, is this labor or is this a stretch and sweep? And they're like, just wait, like just see how it goes. And progressively and progressively I got worse and worse and you know they were like okay try to labor for as long as you can at home which I didn't love the idea of because like I really don't like the idea of giving birth at home so I was like I want to go to hospital but anyway I hopped in the bath and started laboring in the bath with action which helped like it definitely eased it but as soon as I hopped out of the bath it got so bad <laughs> like it got worse in a way because you're you've been soothed and then you hop out and it's terrible um and then i moved downstairs and was on the couch and this whole time now i'm like breathing through my contractions like they're no longer just like a little tightening like i'm breathing through them trying to get myself in the groove for extremely hard labor and i think i actually i don't know if i've lost it but i have a clip of that time so if i have it i'll insert it here good morning guys it is currently the 28th of july at 11 15. this morning i had a midwife appointment for my 40 plus 3 appointment we chose to accept a stretch and sweep and <laughs> i was experiencing contractions in the car and everything and they were bearable they were fine and they started to get a bit more intense so when I got home, they also started to seem a bit more regular and becoming more intense, so I started tracking them. I started tracking them at 10 a.m. It's now 11.15, as I said, and I've had 18 contractions, and I'm averaging at 50 second long contractions every four minutes. We called the midwife to double check that, because obviously we are first time parents, and they seem to think that that's okay at the moment, but if it gets any more regular or any more intense to go to the hospital. And to me, I'm feeling like they're getting more and more intense. It could be a completely false alarm or it could be something, so. <sighs> So then I'm laboring at home on the couch and it basically got to the point, you know, we were umming and ahhing about going to the hospital and like what to do. And it basically just got to the point where I turned to Luke and I was like, we're going to the hospital right now. Like, I can't do this anymore at home. Which was a good call. Which is a really good call because that car ride <laughs> was the most, oh, like I can't even describe how painful it is to have to sit in a certain position going over bumps, like I death stared you, didn't I? Like I turned to you like, stop mm. going over speed bumps so fast or any bump. And the hospital conveniently has the worst speed bumps and the most <laughs> of them. It's hard because I don't want to compare myself to other people, but I also do compare to just compare my experience. 
and one of the YouTubers I follow, you know, they're like fully coherent, like going to the hospital and that was not me. Like in the car, I didn't open my eyes once. The whole time in the hospital, I felt like embarrassed. Luke had to wheel me in on like a wheelchair because I, I couldn't walk or anything at this point. You were so, definitely not walking. No, and I hardly opened my eyes. Like I occasionally like half open to see if we were close because I was just feeling so shit at this point I am like I couldn't remember where to go for the birth suite or anything I didn't open my eyes at all and like the lady tried talking to me when we got there like got to the birthing suite and she's like oh like how are you and I'm like yeah like <laughs> I'm like whatever tense labor I guess I don't want to call it intense labor because it definitely got worse but like main labor started at 2 30 We've got a little timeline written down here. Um, and at 3.30, we headed to the hospital. Oh, it's so strange to talk about. It's insane. Like, it can't really, you can't really put it into words, yeah. the, the pain you're going through. Um, but, you know, she tried to lay me back at one point as I'm contracting to check how far along I was. And I was like... Basically, whenever I moved from my perfect sitting position, it was like immense pain. So like, she was like, do you want to try the shower? Do you want to try the bath? Do you want to try the exercise ball? And I was like, I honestly feel like I can't move. Like, I can't move from this position because as soon as I would move, it would just be the most intense, <laughs> intense pain ever. But so basically the way I'm positioned is I'm sitting on the side, like the bed's like that, and I'm sitting on the side with my legs over the side. And Luke's standing directly in front of me and every time a contraction came, I am just- Squeezing the crap out of me. Squeezing, like it was your jumper. I didn't uh, squeeze you, did I? Yeah. Oh, there you go. This is why I wanted Luke here because like, I can't remember a lot of aspects. Yeah, there was one, there was, well, one, there was a few times where you like, just mm. you grabbed it whatever you could and like you were sort of pulling on my neck and oh really yeah or whatever I'm like yeah like, so definitely had the easy job you just tense so bad and I was just like squeezing his jumper and squeezing other parts of him and like that went on the whole time basically for the rest of my labor we didn't even have a chance to get the bags out of the car get anything out of the car like we yeah the idea was take her up. Go and back and get everything. Once the midwives were looking into it, oh, it's going to quickly get the bags and come back up. And so I got and the bags like, like seven hours later. Yeah, and I was just like, Luke, look, to, it's just last priority right now. I'm like, let's just, you stay here because I just wanted him there. Like, I am in so much pain at this point and I'm like with a random lady. Like, I'm starting to around six, maybe, think about having the epidural and... Um, you know, she's obviously trying to make sure that I'm not just making that decision out of pain. Like I genuinely wanted. So she's like, okay, you sure you don't want to try anything else beforehand? I'm not saying don't get the epidural. I just want to make sure that like, that's the right thing for you. Which is I good am because struggling. you, you like they yeah. asked you what you want going into it and you specifically yeah. stated that you didn't want it. Yeah. And I, yeah, cause I went into my labor wanting a natural labor at six i'm kind of thinking about it umming and ahhing kind of <laughs> incoherently talking to luke in between contractions not knowing what to do and at six thirty, she's like well if you are getting the epidural i need to measure how far along you are i don't remember this part i thought the whole time she couldn't measure how far along because whenever i laid back i was in like immense pain so how did she end up measuring she would have, like, I would have had to lay down and her get in she, there. Yeah, no, she measured you. Yeah, well, okay, every, so. Every, every time. So at 6.30, um, she measured me and I was five centimeters dilated. So at this point, I'm like, I'm so glad I've decided to go an epidural because I'm only halfway <laughs> and I was in so much pain. So I'm pretty good with pain. <laughs> It's a different sort of pain. It was a, an emotional thing for me because I feel like there's a lot of stigma around having a natural birth. So as soon as I decided to have an epidural, I will admit I was leaning into Luke, obviously contracting and everything, and I just started crying. And Luke's just like, please don't be upset. Not to mention you, like, were, you were 
riddled with pain. You were I exhausted. I was exhausted at this point. Like, I would contract and just, like, drop into Luke, like, with nothing left in me. I was holding you upright. Yeah. I'm, like, crying, like, that I'm getting the epidural and Luke's, like, if this is what you're wanting and this is how much pain you're in, like, you've got nothing left in you and you're only halfway... <coughs> Like, please don't feel bad. <laughs> so that's at 6.30. All this happens. I get measured. We've decided epidural is a go. She goes to find the... Anesthesia. Uh, yep. And sort that out. Comes back. At this point, from deciding I want the epidural, my contractions just decided to, like... Go full. Go full, full force. So I am contracting super hard now, like, to the point that... I am, like, squeezing Luke, like, pulling at him. Throughout my pregnancy, I knew my back was going to be my main issue in labor, and it was. So I definitely had a back labor, but towards the end here that I'm talking about, it wrapped, like, it would start in my back, and then by the end of the contraction, it would wrap the whole way around the front, and it was just... All I can describe it as is this. <laughs> That's just what it feels like. And it's just like so tight and the whole front and back of me and I am like, it's forcefully moving me up and like, I'm squeezing Luke. <clears throat> He's putting on his cranky pants. That's right, we can settle him. The person that does the epidural, I'm not going to say that word, I'm just going to butcher it. Anastasius. He, at this point, I'm in so much pain and wanting the epidural quickly, like... And he is seeing other people that are in a higher... There was a, an emergency yeah. happening. And yeah. then on top of that, there was one more lady going through her pregnancy who just asked for an epidural before. Us. Yeah. By yeah. the time the emergency was done, yeah. I think 40, 50 minutes had passed. Yeah, so she went, the other lady. she went off to check after half an hour half an hour and he still was like 20 minutes off and then she'd say oh it's going to be another 10 minutes and then 10 minutes would go back and she'd say it's going to be another 10 minutes I think so, that was actually worse yeah, yeah. I think if she just said look it's going to be an hour and you can sort of brace for it but yeah. to be told 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes it like, I would literally starts like, to really annoy you like I'm contracting intensely can't speak or anything but I would mutter out to Luke what is the time like I can't do this any longer. Luke's just gonna calm our baby up here. Yeah. Hi. 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 That's his favorite word. Agoo. I want to teach him his first word to be hi, so we can push him around in a pram and he'll be like, hi, 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 hi. hi. <laughs> so basically, I am there in immense labor waiting for my epidural. Totally understanding that emergency is before me, like I'm not saying that he should have come straight to me, but just letting you know that. But it was hard. Like I've said to everyone after birth, my last three contractions before that epidural, like I had an hour waiting for my epidural and the last three in that hour- Last four, but four, yeah. four were insane. Like I, whew, I, at this point, was like, I need that epidural so bad. And he came in, and he's like, how are you? And I'm like, yep. <laughs> and he's like, okay. That, that guy, a lot of the people we met in the hospital were fantastic. But that oh, guy was, he was incredible at yeah. his job. He was such a <clears> down to earth, easy to get along mm. with person. This is now 7.30 at night and I have just gotten my epidural. You yeah. went from 10 out of 10 pain to as soon as it was done, literally within three seconds, the guy said, how do you feel? And you, with almost like this drugged up smile, was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I'm a pretty zero good. Zero out of 10 pain. Because, oh my gosh, it just alleviated everything. At that point, as I said, I was falling into Luke. Like, I had nothing left. So I'm still exhausted, but like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I can't feel this immense pain anymore. Which is really nice to say. Yeah. From then, I'm laying in bed, obviously, because I can't walk around, and I am just contracting. They've got the monitor on my belly, making sure he's okay, 
and all that I can still feel it but it's not painful it's just more like uncomfortable like it just is the tensing that you feel um, and she said that usually when you get an epidural your contractions slow down but mine didn't they were still going as per normal so that was really good so technically it didn't slow down my labor at all and I still ended up being in my for a while. Three hours after having my epidural at 10.30 at night, she checked how far along I was and I was eight to nine centimeters dilated. So at this point they started discussing breaking my waters. They were kind of leaving it because they were so close to breaking themselves. They were so good there. They made sure you're fully educated before making your decision and then make sure that you are comfortable with your decision like afterwards. It was insane. I'm just laboring at this point. I'm trying to rest but the thought of him coming like there was no way I was getting sleep. I'm just kind of waiting but like going through it and going through emotions, talking to the midwife, she had kids, talking to her about her experience. So it was a much different dynamic to before having the epidural. Oh my god I totally forgot to mention. During my labor when I was in intense labor I tried the morphine gas. And I had that for the intense part, and it did. it made nothing, no difference to me at all. It was just something to do and something to concentrate on while oh. in a contraction. So I did keep doing it, but it did nothing. After the birth, they yeah. got you to have another go at it and because I, you weren't contracting. You had like two sucks in this thing, and it was literally you would. It was I like was you were drunk. high like, yeah. or, or drunk, yeah. I felt tipsy. Are you just chatting? I was 8 to 9 centimeters dilated at 10.30 and at midnight they broke my waters and they broke my waters because there was part of my, I don't know the term because I'm obviously not a midwife or anything, but it's like a wall. It's not necessarily your dilation, but like the last of your wall had hadn't opened and breaking my waters would do that. They broke my waters at midnight on the dot. Then they were like, okay, so in an hour, roughly, we'll check you again. So at 1.15 in the morning, they checked and I was fully dilated and like ready to rumble, you know? At this point, I'm pretty tired, but at the same time, I'm like, I've got like all this adrenaline because I'm like, gonna give birth. Sorry, I just changed the camera again. Luke's still up there. At 1.30, so 15 minutes later, they've prepared me and everything to start pushing. We've done some practice pushes to make sure I'm pushing in the right spot, because obviously I don't know because I've got the epidural. This experience for me was fine, it's just basically push like you're pooing. I know that sounds really <laughs> gross, but <Right. laughs> it's tiring even when you've got the epidural because you're obviously like tensing a lot. Like I was pushing for quite a while.
So I started pushing, everything was fine. Push on your contractions if you guys aren't aware because I don't know if I was really aware of that. I would obviously have my breathing break in between contractions and then contract and push breath in, push like while you're contracting, like it's just like bang, bang, bang. She said I was pushing really well and everything. As you contract, your baby's heart rate drops, that's normal. And then when you stop contracting, it rises. They started to get a bit concerned about his heart rate because when I was contracting, it was it would drop, but it wouldn't climb back up as fast as they were wanting. So they started talking to me about how he might need assistance to come out. This is a while after me pushing too. So at 2.45 in the morning, so an hour and 15 minutes later, <laughs> I'm still pushing and they put a vacuum suction cap on him. And at this point, they were like, you're about to tear to make this better for you. We are going to have to do an episiotomy. Once again, this was explained to me in full. If you guys are unaware, an episiotomy is when you're snipped down there instead of tearing. Being snipped is better than tearing. So it's to basically make room for him to come out in a better way. Couldn't feel a thing, obviously, because I had the epidural. Then at 2.53 a.m. on the 29th of July, we gave birth to our little boy. It was insane. It was very surreal. To him. So this is Zephyr John Wardrop, <laughs> born at 2.53 on the 29th of July, 2022. He's getting upset. <laughs> My first words seeing Zephyr. No, oh, this is unbeatable. <laughs> so when you're very lazy, I know you got signs to emulate. Well, yeah, my first words seeing him and they pulled him up and I saw him before they like passed him to me and I was just like, he's huge. <laughs> I don't remember really saying that, but it was like words, my first you look word. Down, you have one look at the little ball of joy that just took nine months. Mm-hmm. And you say, he's huge. Yeah. <laughs> and he was to me. I was like, how did that fit in he me? Was, like, that's, he was big. Yeah. That's how I was looking at him. I was and like, how did he fit? So at this point, they give him to me. And he is like skin on skin on my chest. And I am so many different emotions. It feels so surreal to have him on me. Yet he's on me. Like, I'm like, this is my son. But like this is so surreal like i couldn't wrap my head around that this was mine that's how that kind of was they weighed him he was 3.7 kilos i don't know how to say pounds so i'm just going to say what it says but it's 8.16 pounds so that's like a pretty big baby and everyone was like, I can't believe such a little person <laughs> made such a big baby. Basically, I was in labor from about 10. 10 in the morning, I think we started like, is this labor, is it not? And it got more and more intense. So like 2.30, I'm in intense labor. And then more than 12 hours later, I've given birth to Zephyr. So that's just a time estimate for like my labor and how it all went. I hope I touched on everything. As I said, my recollection of it is very hazy. And then my recollection of anything with mum brain now is making everything worse. So <laughs> if I have forgotten anything, I will include it on the screen. I have now come to terms with getting the epidural. It took me a while. I was quite disappointed in myself in a lot of ways, but I am now so grateful and thankful I got epidural. Now looking at how long my labor still had to go, um, like I still had another six, eight hours. To anyone that thinks that a natural birth has to be the way as well, just understand like, I am talking. There's no harm, there's no reason that like in getting other things, like yeah. science has made these things because it's painful. Yeah. There's some people that have to have it. So to, to anyone to say that a natural birth is the only way, like there, there's some ladies that cannot have a natural birth. So yeah. it's, there's not a problem with it. And it's the same with breastfeeding. Okay. It is what it is. It's the end result that matters. Yes, it is. I went into my birth too as an open book. I definitely wanted natural, but I wasn't 
fixated on it. It's only like when I decided to that I was like, I felt really disappointed because there is such a stigma around, oh, you gotta have a natural birth, you gotta do it like this. Like, But now I have come to terms with it um, for multiple reasons because my labor ended up taking like so much longer after getting it. So I'm grateful I had the epidural because of that. I'm also grateful because I had an episiotomy, like I was already numb, you like everything was ready to go for that. But I'm just like trying to think, there's nothing else, is there? Like I've touched on everything. To any of the hospital staff that was involved, you were all fantastic. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna stand up quickly because I wanna, want Luke to touch on his side because obviously the men's side of labor is very different and I want Luke to touch on what he went through because obviously I was just going through what I went through. Go ahead, babe, take it away. So from my side of things, I always was told that labor is one of the most intense things that you'll ever see someone go through. So I already knew that and yeah, the other thing I was told is one of the happiest moments you'll have ever have is when you first hold your baby. So those are the two th things that are already new, and it like me, like I'm an idiot. I had stupid jokes lined up at like horrible jokes that were typical dad jokes, and I was going to drop them at random moments, and I kept my mouth shut because. Labour is literally the most intense thing I have ever seen. So whatever I thought, it was more than that. Um, the idea that women can go through that is incredible. To go through all of that and to finally actually pick up your boy or your girl, I fully understand exactly what they were saying about that too. Like it, to, to see how intense everything is to get the thing that you've created put in your arms like it is the nicest moment you will ever ever feel have the utmost respect for anyone that's going through it no one tells you about how going into it you don't have really any sleep under your belt either you're tired you're physically exhausted then you go through yeah a whole day of that it's something else entirely and that's from the men's side of things. Mm. Sorry ladies, but you're mm -hmm. in for a tough ride. And then, do you have any advice for other men? Any advice that you Just need? be there. Like, literally be there. Keep your mouth shut. Be a good support. You've literally got to do it for at least the next 18 years of their life. So, start on that day. <laughs> Look at that sleepy little boy. If you guys have any questions, please comment down below. Message me if you don't want to be seen. I'll put my Instagram here. You guys can contact me there. If you just want to be anonymous with your questions, I am so honest with my replies, guys. So if you do have any questions, please, please, like, don't hesitate to ask. I will answer, even if it's TMI. Like, I am an open book, especially with this. But yeah, that is our birth story for the greatest gift we've ever gotten. There are so many emotions after birth and with going to the um, maternity ward and things like that but I'm going to break all that down in a separate video because this video has actually been a lot longer than I thought it would be so I'm going to talk about my hospital stay and how my recovery things like that in the next one and I hope you guys enjoyed that's also the first time you guys are hearing his name so I hope you guys like it hope you subscribe I'm going to update you guys on absolutely everything so yeah Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one. Bye. You happy now? The star of the show isn't in it. <laughs> I am, should we say our age? No, we're not saying age. <laughs> uh, I'm young. Luke's an old fart. No. <laughs> <coughs> and I was 40. We'll yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm getting all muddled now. So yeah. I'm going to do everything can't fix. <laughs> I know. And then obviously he took Luke's surname, which hopefully I'll get one day. <laughs>
I saw a TikTok and it's like, and your baby gets your partner's last name before you. And she's like having a breakdown. And I was like, that's me.